After their initial successes in Kosovo, Albanian nationalists began to initiate insurgencies in the local region, beginning with the Preševo Valley and then moving on in the early 2000s to Macedonia. And in Macedonia, these forces were mainly under the control of Ali Ahmedi and his National Liberation Army, who were fighting for the same general goals as the UCK up in Kosovo. On August 10th of 2001, about 100 Macedonian army reservists were moving up through this village here behind me, Ljubotin. And it seems to be that there was a landmine placed at the entrance of the village, which went off as a vehicle crossed it, killing eight army reservists. Now, when questioned about this, Ali Ahmedi denied placing the landmine there. He said it wasn't a NLA landmine. It was most likely a landmine placed by the Macedonian military in an effort to prevent rebel access to this village, which is by and large mostly ethnically Albanian and Islamic. However, two days later, the Macedonian army moved in on August 12, 2001, and began reprisal attacks. Immediately, they began shelling the town from the hills surrounding it and firing down on civilians from a helicopter, killing an elderly man and a six-year-old. And then they moved into the village and mostly shot the rest of the massacre victims in the back of the head, but there was one man that they stabbed to death in front of his elderly paralyzed father. This was an infamous incident, and it resulted in one of the those lesser known massacres because, again, the insurgents here in Macedonia never gained the same level of recognition. However, these issues were mainly solved by politics of the time so that the insurgency didn't reach the escalated level seen in Kosovo. Still, it is a sore subject, as you can imagine, for people in the village here, especially the supporters of the NLA. And when Human Rights Watch came in uh, some time later, they concluded that no NLA present was actually in the village. However, there was one man who is important to mention who began an NLA attack after this initial massacre on August 12th began. <laughs> The only account I can find of an NLA member being killed in the village of Ljubotin in relation to this massacre is that of Muzaffar Agushi. And it must be remembered that the NLA would maintain a presence in these villages, and much like the UCK, they would make their presence known, they would kind of get locals accustomed to them being in the local area, and then when state security arrived, they would usually leave, and they built up a rapport with the local community, although not outright material support. So when Muzaffar heard word of this massacre, happening, he disobeyed the direct orders of NLA headquarters and went into the village with a few of his friends to try to stop the massacre. Now, the reason this was in disobedience of direct orders is because the NLA realized that any fight they had, they would totally be annihilated. And after all, the Macedonian military had helicopters and artillery based on the hills around town. And like the NLA told him he actually was killed, and because of that he was seen as a martyr. However, the NLA didn't want him fighting because they were concerned that it would be seen not as a massacre of civilians, but as an NLA conflict in which civilians died. And it must again be stated, again and again, Human Rights Watch said no NLA were present at the time the massacre began and Ali Ahmedi expressed regret at the eight men who died and still maintains that this landmine was not placed there by the NLA, making all of the people buried here behind me innocent civilians who were the target of the Macedonian military on August 12, 2001. So the Orthodox monastery in the village of Ubotin, if you cross over to the western part of the village, you start seeing these much nicer houses built out of cinder block instead of the uh, mostly sort of beige blocks that they use. This is a much more well built up area and I believe that this is the orthodox part of the village which kind of leads back to the same thing we have in the deep south, how communities are just divided by a road and you cross over the railroad tracks and it just becomes a totally separate community. Although in America, it's mostly similar religion, but here it's Orthodox and Islam. <laughs> 